Hi, welcome to the first hammer tutorial for a new series. This will have a series of long important videos and then followed by smaller niche topics. I highly recommend you make your own things when following this series. By the end of the series you should have a well made map that can be uploaded to the workshop. This series is made for sandbox but some of the things in this video may change from release. This video will cover interface, dimensions, and basic modeling. To start this, open sandbox dev or the dev kit of your choice. We will then create an add-on through the menu. First, make it a map. Let's name it Tutorial Map for now. Then, create a folder with the same name. We will click on it, click OK, and then press the hammer button to open up this map. Sandbox gives you a lot of useful stuff in the add-on map, so just delete it so we can start fresh. Alright guys, before we start into the map making process, let's go over the interface. Let's go over the top, uh, set first file. This is the typical open, save stuff you guys already know. Edit. Nothing important here. Map. These the first two uh, show 2D grid. The grid in the two views show 3D grid in the 3D views. So these things you can just use hotkeys with the brackets <coughs> next to the P. Map information. Sorry, entity gallery. Uh, this will show all the entities in a different map. So if you need to copy it over, not useful. Map information also not really useful. Just show stuff about the file size. Map properties. Uh, stuff that you might run into. So uh, map type. So for skybox, none of this is important right now though. Uh, map favorable, map relays, it's not really important. Entity report, if you have an entity in the map, it will show up in here. If you need to edit it, to delete it. Or select a mass amount of specific type of entity. This is to load, uh, if you ever did like hammer one, this leaves. This is the same, it'll load up the way, you know. It's not as important as it was in source one because the way optimization is different, but if you need to look at How's you know working? It's not really important, and it's still running map and engine. Toolbar. If you want to change your workflow, you can have a few floating things uh, in another window. The rest of the stuff you can just put somewhere like this. Uh, none of those stuff is super important. Uh, create instance. Not really important either. All this stuff we done. This. If you want to have more realistic lighting in the editor, which uh, you can do this. Not perfect, but yeah, this stuff is important. Let's go over the second one. These first four are for uh, modeling, vertices, points on the mesh, edges, the lines, faces, faces, mesh, you know, the whole thing. I'll go over it more once we get into the modeling, so yeah. Objects for mesh entities, groups, groups of objects, navigation, navigation. Let's go over this section, which we call the editing settings. Uh, this is where, like, the gizmos of it, if it's bound by the world, this, if you want to be bound by the object, this. You can switch in between by clicking tab. Like that. All right. Uh, this is to change the uh, the world origin. You change it onto a uh, side of the mesh. So if you want to have a, if you don't want to, if you want to have different like angles, you use this. And this to reset it to the original. This is that the texture stays in place. If you if you change if you translate it, if you sorry if you transform it, this will keep the same. This is if you scale it without the without the edge or vertice manipulation. This is for scaling with edge or um, vertice manipulation. I usually keep both of these locked, but sometimes you want to do it. If you have a uh, texture that you need to fit, I, I recommend keeping these on lock. This stuff, not important. This is to run map, but I just do F9. This is to show helpers to like radiuses of entities without clicking on them. Uh, this is entities, if it's disabled, they won't show up in the grid. This is uh, tool material, such, and just a lot of stuff like uh, triggers, black light, that kind of stuff. And then this is force light that are toggled off, it'll force them on. This stuff is important, not really important. This is, uh, this will show the grid on subdivisions, which are displacements. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. This is to restart all particle effects, and this is for them to actually play. Um, this over here are, is coordinates. Let's go down here. Select uh, Shift S. Select an object. Translate T. Move an object on the grid. Uh, rotate. Orientate the object on the grid. Scale. Scale the object on the grid. This is T R and then E. This is pivot maker. So you want to change the pivot. You do that, all right? Entity tool spawn entity. Sandbox has this, this set up. Block tool, create a block, and change the kind of block you want. Pass tool, stuff like ropes. Polygon tool, create special 3D shapes. 
flipping tool, flip an object. Mirror tool, if you want to mirror the uh, shape to flip sides, you do that. Texture protection, haven't really used that. Um, blend painting tool, blend textures. Displacement tool, uh, add terrain, pretty much that kind of stuff. Physics tool, that you know, if you want to have physics, uh, if you want to, uh, you know, f do physics in, in the editor to make, like, have a prop, do something with that. Uh, if you want to have like vegetation stuff like that sprayed, this is it. So it's spray, it can spray just one or many types of meshes to create like a clutter thing. And then I haven't really used these; these are important. So that's the basic interface. All right, guys, before we start into the map making process, let's go to the interface. Let's go over the top uh, set first file. This is the typical open, save stuff you guys already know. Edit, nothing important here, map. These, the first two uh, show 2D grid. The grid in the 2D views show 3D grid in the 3D views. So these things, you can just use hotkeys with the brackets <coughs> next to the P. Map information, sorry, enter gallery. Uh, this will show all the entities in a different map. So if you need to copy it over, not useful. Map information. So for the reference picture, I picked this modern art picture. Uh, I picked it because it can show how to use the base mechanics well. It works well in hammer, and it it looks good. I, I like modern design. You know, it's flat, but I still think it looks good. So for the reference, all right. Let's start with making the map. All right. I'm going to select the quad tool and make a mesh on the grid. Let's make it about a square mesh. Let's extend it out, three blocks out. Then extend it that way, three blocks out. We have a nice L shape. All right, now I want to have a doorway there, so I got to make a room for a 128 doorway. So I'm going to select it all, extend it up. All right, it needs to be taller, so extend it two floors. When I look at the picture, it's the real height of the doorway, so uh, I think 64 would be good. Yeah, that's not good. So now I have to uh, fill the door. So B to select two faces and bridge like that. And then to fill a face up, I click P. Alright, next I want to extend this hallway out. Hold Shift while pulling it out. All right. And I'm gonna just pull it down like this to create a nice hallway. This looks pretty good. Now I want to create a room. Alright, I'm going back to the quad. Just B. I'm gonna create the room like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab up. I'm gonna grab all the edges. So yeah, I'm gonna grab all the edges here and put them out to the height of the other place. Seems like I messed up here the height of it so I'm going to bring this down and then make the cut for the uh, top area. I'm going to fill that in with P. I actually flipped it. Right. I'm going to extend this out again to make it a more squarish room. So yeah. Now I think it's time to get into the doorway. All right. With the doorway I think it's pretty simple although it seems like I don't like doorways being next to a corner, so I'm going to extend this out uh, 32 units. Alright, now I'm making a cut here, making 128 units so I can make the door frame more easily. I'm going to delete the space that the door frame is taken up like that, but I need to make an arch, so I'm going to delete the top one, extend that one out to uh, 32 units, because I'm going to have a 64 unit arch. So I extend it up to by clicking Y. And then I'm gonna have to create a clip around so I can properly fill the face up. Alright. Uh, I delete that face because I'm gonna make this face, so that's why. So I made an issue, I didn't make a cut down the middle, which caused it to air you know, to make a cut here and then control H to hide, and then I'm gonna select that base, click M to merge, and I'll fix it. Alright, then I will have those faces look good. I delete those faces, I select them all, I T, hold shift, extend out. Then I'm gonna grab those two faces, click shift F, go in the 2D view, and near the other side. Right. I still need to make it merge, uh, have the edges merge, so I'm gonna add a cut down the middle, like this, click enter, and it should be fine. Although, 
sometimes it, it gets wonky. So you need a it doesn't work for you. So here I'm making the other doorway entrance. Uh, I was looking at it originally. And I thought, you know, it's, I, I like it better when view lines match up because that wouldn't make sense with the doorway being really arched like that. So I look at it. I decide I'm gonna shift it over. All right, now I have to change the door thing, but instead of just shifting it all over, that would be lazy. I bridge those holes using B, and then I create a new thing. Now. I click, uh, I select those, I have to delete the extra variety, but I select those two, click B. Uh, I can shift it over the uh, wrong amount, so I go to a smaller grid size, and shift it to the right position. Now we have two doorways, uh, a nice little place set up. Now, now I'm looking to add some extra detail, but then I notice there's an issue with the arch. These edges don't always merge, and it's kind of wonky to get fixed. So sometimes you can try delete one of the, but that doesn't work. So I just bridge them, and then it works. So I looked at some more detail here, but I really didn't think it was needed. I don't know for my design, so everything's flat. So here, uh, I'm just looking what I can add. You, know, you don't always have something to add. You have to look around sometimes. So I'm gonna create some paint, for some walls to put paintings on, like a typical modern modern museum. See how it goes. Uh, I think there's a good size, so I'm just gonna get in like roughly the middle, and then create another one like that. Before I end the video, I have a few things to say. The purpose of the series' main goal is not an introduction to how to use a level editor. I expect people to know how to do some of the things in this video. Although, if you need help with stuff, comment and I will respond as soon as I can. Think of it as me making a map and giving the reason of why and how I do it, mixed with a tutorial series. Also, if you have any suggestions, complaints about my script, mic, etc., please comment below. If you have any video suggestions, feel free to suggest. The next video I plan to release is on texturing, detailing, and basic.